Hello and welcome to Red Risks and in this video I want to share with you some details about pre-startup safety reviews, PSSRs. But, but before we dive in I just want to say that there might be a quiz with this, in fact the chances are that there will be a quiz and wherever there is a quiz you will see this quiz symbol on that particular slide. There may also be a checklist and I'll put the link to that in the description of the video on the YouTube channel or on other social media platforms where this is posted. And also there is a free app, Safe for Working. If you can download the app, I regularly post things on there and I can update you through the app. Now, pre startup safety review content on this slide is taken out of the CCPS guidelines for performing effective pre startup safety reviews. So, if you're familiar with that book and the content associated with the CCPS guidance, there's nothing new in here, but it might be worthwhile as a refresher as well. So, let's start off first with what is a PSSR. A PSSR helps us to focus on readiness prior to a startup. Startup, I hear you say, well, what is a startup? Well, a startup may be considered to be the point at which chemicals or energy is introduced into the system. And pivotal to all of this is that the PSSR is key for any loss prevention efforts during the startup process. A little bit on the history of the PSSR now, and PSSRs really gain their prominence with the introduction of process safety management systems and framework. And it's a part specifically related to operational readiness. And in operations readiness, we're really looking at addressing startups from all types of shutdown conditions. And it could be turnaround, modifications, preventative maintenance, and so on. The operational readiness takes into account the length of the time the process was shut down and also the type of work that might have been involved during that shutdown process, for example, line breaking and other maintenance activities involved. But what is the purpose of a PSSR? Well, simply put, it is to make sure that for the new or modified system, safety hasn't been compromised based upon the original design intent during the implementation. It's really also a final check to confirm that a process um, or facility has been built as designed, uh, all procedures are in place, training is complete, and that any action items from process hazard analysis for the activity has also been resolved. Often there is confusion with what a PSR is and what a PSSR isn't. So just for clarification, a PSSR is not an audit. It's not a last minute hazard analysis. Neither is it a, a platform or a venue for design code or engineering standards review. It's also not management of change. That is a really important standalone feature on its own. And it's not a punch out system. It's not like a snag list. So what are the benefits of a PSSR? There's a load of benefits from PSSR, and I'm not going to go into the, all the details here, but there is a question in the quiz on this. So just to let you know, there are things like design benefits, operational benefits, documentation, all the way through to regulatory, and in fact, QA as well is a beneficial aspect associated with PSSR. There are various types of PSSR. In particular, there is a simple PSSR. It's a straightforward one. It looks at trigger events and it's pretty well understood. It can be approved with minimal resources without detriment to the final outcome of the risk management process. It doesn't mean, doesn't mean that it's a lower quality of risk assessment or of PSSR, but rather the approach requires a lower level of resources and um, effort. So it's a quick way of looking at issues associated with startup after any shutdowns. The other PSSR to mention is complex, which is of course the opposite of a simple one in that the change is complex, has multiple facets and will require a deeper dive and a review for assurance regarding risk management. And in this, the PSSR requires some special planning and effort due to its unique risk-based characteristics or novelty to the site. Whenever we use the terms complex PSSR or long-form PSSR, they indicate a more customized and sometimes more time-consuming approach to verifying the readiness for the startup. 
PSSR is a multiple range of applications and again there's a whole list here but I'm going to just quickly go through some of the important ones certainly for capital projects, operational changes, temporary changes and also restarting after mothball and this can be driven by how long it's been out of commission or out of service. Other application includes things like post turnaround startup and after routine maintenance and also any startup after emergency shutdowns. Sometimes it's easy to just flick the switch and start up again, but it's important to remember there has been a state a status where nothing has happened. So it's 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 a startup process that needs you know specific review, especially if you've gone through an emergency shutdown process. In terms of how to do a PSSR, a risk-based PSSR, there are some, of course, fundamental things, just like every other risk assessment. You gather the documentation, you schedule meetings as you need, but also look at trigger events, verify the trigger events that are related to the work that is to be completed. Other items include identifying and tracking process hazard analysis actions items, any actions items associated with the PSSR. And here we're talking specifically about checklists, and I'll cover those in a little bit more detail later on. Identify items that are critical for safe operations, especially safety critical equipment, and consider past um, PSSR, PSMs, uh, compliance audit findings, PSM being process safety management. You'll also have to approve the PSSR report and reference the documentation and also have team approvals and management approvals. Quite a lot to go through there, but I really just want to sort of share some of the things required for setting up. With, of course, every PSSR, it requires team effort. So a team will have roles and responsibilities. You need to make sure you have a full team to, to do a thorough PSSR process as with any other risk management approach and up to 30 people can take part in a, in a PSSR in small group sessions and you should have designated people involved for the appropriate reviews. Some of the review people that you could consider include process engineers, safety reps, um, operations personnel, mechanical representative and you can add others as you require specific to the activity or the task that you're looking at in terms of the review. And of course, every risk management or risk assessment process will have a team leader. And in this case, the PSSR team leaders function is as usual to ensure that everybody has input um, and everybody has responsibility for uh, having a key input for areas where they've had design uh, sort of um, actions and tasks involved or operational tasks especially important to make sure people who are operationally involved have an input and also the maintenance team as well. The PSSR team leader is typically responsible for seeing the process all the way through to closure. Having done your PSSR, of course, as Peter Drucker used to say, what gets measured gets managed. So we need to look at how we can look at key performance indicators for PSSR and there is a ton of PSSR uh, KPIs and I'm going to share with you some of them in the next slide. You can slow down, pause, watch uh, at your convenience but I'll rapidly go through these just to uh, make sure I've covered as many as I can. So some of the things you could consider are a number of incidents that occur during startup, you know, number of serious shutdowns after the startup, a number of personnel trained prior to startup, there is no shortage of KPIs when it comes to look at PSSR performance. And again, a collection here, including the number of people trained per year on pre-startup safety reviews, a very important aspect. It's important to make sure that people have the competency and the skill set plus the tools to make sure you have an effective PSSR. And again, a few more here just to go through them all the way through to the number of action items completed after startup. A range of um, KPIs there that you can consider for pre-startup safety reviews. All uh, must emphasize our reference from the CCPS guidance that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Please check it out and pick the ones that are the most effective for you and your organization. Don't go for paralysis by analysis. Just pick the ones that are very relevant for you and ones that could make sure that your PSSR is performing effectively. 
But what are the steps involved in the PSSR? And I'm going to talk to you just about eight, well, seven steps that are key for uh, PSSR uh, set, uh, getting it executed. All the way from training the workforce, looking at trigger events. Step three is the type of PSSR that you want to do. Remember, we mentioned simple and complex. Don't um, boil the ocean looking at complex when a simple PSSR would do. You need to build the team for doing the PSSR. You conduct it, you do the documentation, and then you track for closure, any action items. Another key important part is to make sure that the actions are assigned to the relevant people with appropriate closure dates and hopefully before you actually start up the process. Right at the beginning of the video, somewhere on the line, I mentioned checklists. Checklists are fundamental for an effective PSSR, and it's centered around the checklist. And many companies develop their own checklist based upon the activities and the tasks that are involved. My suggestion when it comes to checklists, and I'll try and share a, a micro video with you, which I can um, put as a, as a link in this video or separately, where I have got several checklists that I've developed for doing PSSR. And essentially, it's just a, a sanity check to make sure that what you said you were going to do, you have covered it and it's been effective and also any action items associated with it are closed out. Wow, there was a lot to get through there. Thank you so much for listening to me as I went through the video. And of course, do drop me a email or connect with me on LinkedIn if you've got any specific thoughts. There is also, of course, the app. Download the app. It's free and I can at least keep in touch with you and notify you of any new content as it's being developed. Other than that, thank you. And I'll catch up with you soon on the next video. But um, take care.